And uh, moreover, as I and I said in, uh, previously, econ coordinators have exceptionally decided for another topic to be included uh, in uh, this monetary dialogue uh, regarding improving the ECB's accountability framework. Indeed, in recent years, monetary policy gradually became more complex, with more uncertain side effects, and with a greater interaction with other policies. Constrained with the lower bound uh, on interest rates, central banks have, out of necessity, uh, used uh, so-called uh, uh, non-standard uh, monetary policy instruments. Uh, faced with an unprecedented economic shock caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the ECB reacted quickly, forcefully, and steadily by employing once again these instruments at a, an even greater scale. The completion of the strategy review in July marks in some ways the beginning of a new phase for the ECB. We need to reflect on what this revised strategy means for our interaction with the uh, ECB and scrutiny of its monetary policy. The European Parliament considers that improvements to the ECB accountability frameworks could and should be made while, of course, safeguarding the ECB's uh, treaty-defined independence. Uh, Madame Lagarde's statements during the monetary dialogue of uh, September 28, 2020, were also going in the direction of reconsidering the accountability practices following the outcome of the review. So the Econ Committee is ready to start uh, discussion and actually start negotiations on an interinstitutional agreement to formalize um, and, uh, and possibly go beyond the existing accountability practices in the area of monetary policies. We haven't spoken much about the, uh, the accountability and the relations between the ECB and the European Parliament. Um, uh, here I would like a bit to know uh, how do you see the next steps? Huh? In the, your introductory statement you have spoken about um, uh, to keep certain flexibility, that what matters is how we make things. Uh, but I would like to concretely ask you whether you would agree on having an interinstitutional agreement or not, or how do you see the next steps in our relations between both institutions? Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Ultasun, for, uh, for your second question in that respect. Um, first of all, I would um, observe that our uh, current accountability relationship is highly appreciated and uh, that the ECB is committed to uh, deliver on the accountability uh, relationship that we have developed that goes beyond uh, some of the traditional um, tools that were used in the past. And we're, of course, uh, interested in not only delivering on that and continuing that dialogue that we have and that exchange of views and those visits and those, you know, topical consultations that we have had over the course of the last two years, certainly. But I think we should also reflect as to how further we can improve the relationship, how more can be done, and all of that within the parameters of the treaty and in total respect of the independence of the ECB. Those are cornerstones of the relationship uh, that, uh, that we should have in the future. The treaty is very clear on what we can uh, do, and I think the independence of the central bank is something that was also uh, embedded in the uh, in the setting up of, of this of this institution. You know, I'm not I'm not dead keen on a particular label, and I think that we should be mindful of not undermining the treaty provisions uh, that actually provide for the relationship between the ECB and the European Parliament. I'm more interested in what we can effectively operationalize between us than in the actual title of any um, uh, framework that we organized amongst, amongst ourselves. But you know, we will be working on that and we will be uh, very open to this, uh, this dialogue. 